Assalamu alaikum, it's me Fozia al Israbadi, and despite being as white as humanly possible, I am in fact Iraqi. I'm actually half Iraqi. My Bibi and Jiddu uh, immigrated here with my dad and my Amma during the 1970s. When I was a kid, I thought being Iraqi was the coolest thing on the planet. I had a really cool name, and we had really great food. As a five-year-old, that was kind of all that mattered. When I was a teenager, I really struggled with my Arab identity because I was being told that, oh, you don't look Arab or you don't look Muslim, as if there's only one definitive way to be Arab, to be Muslim. But, you know, when you're 15, it's hard because being 15 is hard generally. And when you have an identity crisis every other week, that doesn't exactly help. So, especially because I didn't speak Arabic, I felt there was this like disconnect between me and the culture. So I distanced myself from it. I didn't pretend not to be Iraqi, but I didn't volunteer that information. I didn't talk about it ever. And then my senior year of high school, my baby died. And that was really hard on me and my sister. And after that, I decided to stop distancing myself from my Iraqi heritage. And going into college, I decided to start doing that by correcting people about my name. I was a really shy kid, and so I used to let people mispronounce my name. And I stopped doing that. I did give people an option. I let pe I given people the option more recently to just call me Zia, which is fine. I my pe parents have called me Zia my whole life. It's not a problem. But at the very least, I was going to correct people. My name is Fuzia, not Fazia. Then early my freshman year, there was an incident. Incident is too strong of a word, but I don't know what else to call it. Where I was at the club fair. Signing, I went to sign up for the, a couple of things, but also the stu Muslim Student Association. And I was asking the person in the booth about the uh, events or whatever that they do. And he kept stressing for Muslims and allies and allies. Like he just kept emphasizing and allies. And I, I, I get it. I understand. So I, I didn't say anything because I understood. I was just like, oh, okay, thank you. And I went to write my name down with my email address. And as soon as I, you know, stood straight back up, he turned the paper around, looked at my name, looked at me and went, wait, where are you from? And I just very calmly said, I'm half Iraqi. And he was like, oh. And I could tell he was really embarrassed. And I wasn't angry about it. Cause again, I, I understand, I get it. I do not look what an Arab should look like. I get, I get it. But I, real, I sort of realized, okay, if you're really going to embrace your heritage, if you really want people to know, then you're gonna have to tell people because no one's gonna get it right off the bat. Even with the name, all they know is that you have some sort of non-European, probably at least not Western European background. So you're gonna have to tell people. And so I did. <laughs> I was very vocal and very open about my Arabic Iraqi background. Um, and pretty soon it was just a thing that people knew about me, which was pretty dang great. Um, there's another thing that happened. I'm an actress, so I was doing an acting competition again my freshman year. And during the feedback session for that, one of the people giving me feedback said, you have a very unique look. And I, after we got out of that session, I turned to my scene partner and I said, you have a very unique look. I just, you could just say I have a big nose, dude. It's okay, I do, I get it, I, I understand. <laughs> I like to joke that my nose is the only thing about me that looks Arab at all, um, which again isn't true as if there's only one way to look Arab, but I think it's funny because we do tend to have big noses, especially in my Um No, but and my nose also used to be a sticking point for me as a teenager. I would wear my glasses because it's a little less, a little less prominent when I'm wearing glasses. But I just, again, during college, I just got to a point where it was like, there's, there's no, it's my nose. It's, I'm not going to change it. Um, you might as well be proud of it because it's pretty dang prominent, glasses or not. So I love my nose now. So if I've just learned anything over the years with my own personal struggle, I guess, with my identity, is that there is no one way to be Arab. There's no one way to be Iraqi. You, if you are Iraqi, you're Iraqi. Congrats. Um, but no, I'm really, I'm incredibly proud of my family's heritage, of our history, our culture. It's real. It's really important to me. And, you know, I, I'll, I look forward to embracing it that much more as I go on with my life. My name is Fuzia Srabadi, and I'm what an Iraqi looks like.